This time on Film Ranker, we are looking at Resident Evil. The franchise has six live action movies, half of which are directed by video game to movie guru Paul W.S. Anderson. There's also a bunch of animated films, but we're not going to discuss those here. None of them are in danger of ever winning an award, but that's probably not why you're watching a zombie movie based on a video game anyway. So let's reconfigure those expectations and count them down from worst to best. Number six, Afterlife. In the world of horror franchises, you can pretty safely bet that the one that goes hardest on 3D will generally be the worst. And Resident Evil is no different. Afterlife starts with a cool idea, a revolution of hundreds of superpowered Alice's at Umbrella's Tokyo HQ. But it blows that up in minutes and then sets up another cool thing in Alaska before more or less throwing that away too, and finally setting on being a kind of iffy Dawn of the Dead clone. It does have a few nice intros of video games faves, including Luther and Chris, played by Captain Cold himself, but none of the characters are really given time to shine. It's all great ideas, but no follow through. Number five, the final chapter. The final chapter definitely goes big, kicking things off with a zombie dragon and moving the action into a full-fledged ruined city. It's a return to the action horror roots with the return of all the original baddies and a few of the fan fave sidekicks, aka Claire, but there are certainly a few problems. The first is that it throws away everything from the film before it, including all of those fan fave sidekicks, and it spends a lot of time tripping over itself, both finding convoluted ways to tie up the story while further convoluting it with clones and retcons and dragging people behind slow tanks for no good reason. There are fun moments, but it never really feels like a conclusion. Number four. Apocalypse. This one could move higher based on your love of the video games. Folks who have played them all will probably be happy enough to see Jill Valentine and Nemesis that they can kind of overlook some of the tricky bits. People who don't have the built-in frame of reference, however, tend to get pretty hung up on a few of those clunky bits, including what has to be the most convenient rescue scene in movie history. Either way, the first sequel does do a decent job of taking the action out into the city and incorporating a bigger story, even if the effects don't always do it justice. Number three, Retribution. The fifth Resident Evil movie dives all the way into sci-fi. The setting is definitely the biggest selling point. A city-sized underwater virtual reality facility. There's a lot to deal with off the top. Wesker's good now, and more Agent Smith than ever. Chris and Claire are MIA, and Luther is back, along with the Red Queen AI and the now evil Jill Valentine. But once you get over all of that, the action is actually a lot of fun. Evil Jill Valentine is cool, as is Ada Wong, and this time out, most of the 3D effects actually kind of work. It's kind of a weird side quest to the franchise, but it's worth the diversion. Number two, Extinction. Easily the best looking of the Resident Evil films. The third entry trades in a lot of the sci-fi high-tech stuff for good old-fashioned dust and dirt post-apocalypse a la Mad Max. While some will have problems with the crows and the family of cannibal yokels, what Extinction does well is is the characters. The team that most notably includes Claire and the returning LJ feels a bit more fully formed than they do in some of the other films, and and that goes double with Alice, who finally starts to find her feet and her powers in this film. On the other side of the coin is the Isaac Wesker power struggle that begins to answer a few questions, even if they get unanswered again in later films. It's a cool-looking movie that delivers a mostly satisfying satisfying end to the first trilogy. Number one, Resident Evil. The original Resident Evil film was a huge surprise. Nobody expected it to be anything more than a second-rate zombie film and a quick cash-in on a popular video game franchise. Thankfully, it outstripped expectations on all fronts. Bringing in a movie-specific lead turned out to be a very smart way to tie together the messy chronology of the games, and casting the very capable Mila Jovovich was genius. Without her, this film's still fine. It's got a cool bad guy, some fun twists, and an interesting underlying conspiracy 
Chelsea, but Jovovich propels it from fine to franchise. She has both the acting chops and the inherent coolness to make Alice a memorable badass that falls somewhere between Ripley and the T-800. An emotionally messy killing machine with a blurry backstory that we can't help but root for. And that's it. I am honestly curious how fans of the series see these, as well as where you would fit the animated ones. Maybe I'll add them in once the reboot movie comes out in the hopefully not too distant future. Also, go ahead and like and subscribe, and hopefully I will see you all next time.